sponsored by DCP Player, a simple way to view a DCP on any Windows-based PC. Jeffrey, tell us a little bit more about the process that you went through to make the decision to go 3D. What made you comfortable with making that decision? Um, absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, I, as I've said uh, a number of times, I had this amazing experience in 2004. I went into uh, beautiful IMAX theater, The Bridge, uh, down in uh, Southern California, and uh, I saw Bob Zemeckis' Polar Express, and I just simply never had an experience like that in a movie theater, and it did two things to me all at once, which has exhilarated me in a way that I had never felt in a movie before. It just, it, it just, it pulled me in and, and put me on a roller coaster ride emotionally and physically that was just uh, uh, exciting to me. And it also made me very, very sick because I came out of the theater and realized if we don't get onto this, we're toast. That this is the future of our business that, you know, uh, I think all three of us up here, all four of us up here, the one thing that we absolutely share 100% in common with one another is how much we love the movie theater experience, how much we love to see our films in these movie palaces. And the bigger they are, and the more beautiful they are, and the better the projection, and all of the things that we're talking about here are how do we keep the theatrical experience exceptional. And the thing that, you know, has concerned me is, is that in the past decade, the rate of innovation and what you can do in your home had accelerated enormously. And now with digital and all the things that we're all doing today and Hollywood is doing today is actually giving us an opportunity to be as innovative uh, in the theater experience as what's gone on in the home. And that's the best news of all. So George, uh, you mentioned a second ago that you feel that we're in the early innings of digital transformation. What do you see over the next five to ten years? How is the movie production process going to change? And how is that experience going to translate into the cinema? Well, ultimately, the, which is what Jim was saying, which is, you know, the, the, the big transformation has happened. Sound has been invented. Sound is now in a lot of the theaters. This is the change. It, it changed. And, and that's it. That change won't come along again for another 20, 30, 40, 50 years. We're now digital. We're not going to go back. The changes are now being made in digital are the little tweaks, you know, the, the THX stereo, optical, uh, magnetic, digital. You know, it's all little tiny incremental things that make it even better. But the real event has happened. So what's going to happen? You're going to get better movies. They're going to be much easier to make. The technology is going to be faster, smaller, easier to work with, uh, which hopefully will bring costs down. Um, there is a reality here. One, like many theater goers and almost all filmmakers, we love the movie theater. I make my movies for the movie theater. I don't mind it going to other platforms. But if you want to see it the best way possible, you've got to see it in the movie theater. And of course, that, that's why I'm so adamant about getting the uh, performance good. Uh, what we always say is, you know, movies are a performance art. And it has to do with the theater and the projectionist and the popcorn girl, it has to do with the, the, the environment of the theater. That's where the performance is. It's just as important as what we put on the screen. But movie makers, you know, let's face it, the technology, you know, has something to do with you, but not all to do with you. We can just as easily put it on our iPhones or do whatever we want with it. But what you bring to the table is a great venue. And that's why people go to the movie theater is because movies ultimately uh, represent a social art form. You can't get that on an iPhone, you can't get that on a television. People like to go to a large theater with a lot of people and enjoy an event together. That's why they go and sit in the cold and watch the Green Bay Packers. That's why 
they will go to the ballet, that's why they go to the opera. They go to these venues because they get to dress up, they get to show off, they get to be with other people, they get to laugh together, they get to cry together. That will never change. Movie theaters will never, ever go away. So what we're talking about is we can improve what's on the screen. We can improve the program for you. But you guys, ultimately, the only thing you bring to the table is that you can, you can improve the venue. And that's where your challenge is going to end up being. We will try to make better movies. We, always, we don't like to lose money either. We bring good movies to the screen and everything. But the better the venue, the more prosperous you're going to be. And as I say, the technology we're using for, for 3D, for digital and everything, is accessible to television and iPhones and games and everything else. The one thing you can't, uh, that makes a difference, is ultimately what you guys provide. And it really has to do with food, comfort, quality, um, you know, a good night out. And you can't get that on an iPhone. You can't get that on a television. That's the one thing you guys have a lock on, and you always will. It's just that that's where, ultimately, as we get to this point where all theaters are digital, and then you can sort of upgrade for a minimal amount of money, you can go to 60 frames, you can go to 3D, you can go to showing all, you can show the opera, you can do all kinds of things. Uh, it just puts the emphasis on what are the perks that you have that you provide, which is whether it's waiters or food or you know the things that are going around the world. You know what can you do to enhance the actual experience of somebody. Of the, of the movie going experience. And that's what we're relying on you for. So Jeffrey, five to 10 years from now, what's the new thing in, that we're gonna see in animation? Um, well, again, we uh, sort of gave George a sneak peek at it, and um, uh, it is um, sort of the next level of computing that's coming, which is a, I'll say these words out loud and then you'll think I'm Crazy. It's called scalable multi-core processing. <laughs> you can remember those words. But and what, that means what, what, it, what it means is is that the uh, power and the level of the uh, chips and the speed of them is about to take a quantum leap in which Moore's law goes out the window. The result of which for us is that our artists will actually be able to see and create their work in real time, which does not exist them today and I cannot tell you how transformative that will be for our storytelling and the ability of our, our artists to do it. So just to give you a very short uh, kind of demonstration of it, right now today uh, a, uh, an animator or a lighter uh, gets a frame of a couple of seconds of their work and they uh, uh, render it in this very, very, very low res low resolution form uh, in which it's sort of a, an idea of what it was going to look like. They send it down to a render farm, uh, to a data center, and it comes back literally eight or 10 or 12 hours later, and they now get to see their work. And then they do a set of revisions on that, and it's an iterative process that goes on. What this next generation does is the artist will actually see their work as they're creating it. It's almost like they're going from painting blind to actually being able to open their eyes and see their painting as they are creating it. And uh, it, it, that is such a, a, an extraordinary and revolutionary change of the process uh, for our films that the process itself will actually change the quality of what, of what we're able to do. In the way that I think Avatar you know, has set uh, the, the high bar for uh, just a whole new level of imagination, and stories and storytelling, and um, I think that bar is going to stay high for a long time. That's about to happen to us in animation. So, Jim, talk to us about. It also means in, in special effects and everything, that Jim's dream of 60 frames a second can be done cheaper than we're doing 24 frames a second. Well, that's because, you know, the, the, there's that thing of um, uh, better, faster, cheaper, pick two. All three. This is, this is scalable multi-core processing means all three. 
And we're the kind of guys that want all three. Just naturally. So talk about 3D for a bit. 